Welcome to Medifacts Neurosurgery Rounds. Today's episode is at the Regina General Hospital in Saskatchewan, Canada. We're going to talk about a case of odontoid fracture. We have a 23-year-old man who was involved in a traffic accident and presented with neck pain. He was neurologically intact. The cervical spine imaging that was done showed, you can see here the CT scan which showed an odontoid fracture. You can see the fracture through the base of the odontoid process in the sagittal view as well as in the coronal view. We treated him in a halo device for four months. The neck pain resolved. We removed the halo and placed him in a hard collar with plans to repeat his CT in two months. He was lost to follow up and showed up one year later with neck pain but remained neurologically intact. Here are the cervical spine images. As you can see, the fracture line is still there, in which case there is a non-union of the odontoid process. In my experience, an odontoid fracture in a, an average 23-year-old would heal within six months in a halo, but this one did not heal presumably because he was a heavy smoker. So where do you think we should go from here? Let's ask Dr. Ali Hayek. Dr. Hayek is a neurosurgeon working with us here in Regina as a locum. He did his training in neurosurgery in London, Ontario, and he did his spine fellowship in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ali? What would you do in this situation? Thank you for having me at the rounds. In my opinion, this patient needs instrumentation. Odontoid screws is not a good option because the fracture is old. Transarticular screws fixation is also not a good option because of vertebral artery overriding. That leave us with a few options. C1, C2 harms technique, Fusions, fusion from occiput to C3. Fusion with wires and bone chips is another way to do it. However, the patient will need halo vest for at least six to 12 weeks. Which one of these options would you do? Harms. Thank you. We'll ask Dr. Joseph Buembo, who is a clinical associate professor in neurosurgery here in Regina. Joe, what would you do in this situation? Thanks, Chris. I think in this case, since there's already non-union, I would opt for C1, C2 lateral mass screw rod fixation and fusion. But don't hold screw would likely not work here since the patient has developed non-union. C1, C2 wiring fusion may also work, but uh, my preference in this case would be C1, C2 lateral mass screw rod fixation. Thanks, Joe. Let's see if we can get a hold of uh, Dr. Chris Kuma. Dr. Kuma is a clinical professor of neurosurgery here in Regina. Chris, what do you think? Thanks, Chris for eliciting my opinion. The reason for non-union in this case is due to the fact that he is a heavy smoker. To correct the problem, we will have to take the following steps. Firstly, he must totally give up smoking. Then he will require a fusion either done from the front or back. If one, cons one could consider odontoid screw, but as there is sclerosis around the fracture line, he will need to be maintained in rigid collar for six to eight weeks post-operatively. We can achieve the same result by doing C12 wiring and fusion. It will be preferable to use BMP as well to ensure successful fusion. Post-operatively, he needs to maintain in halo ring and jacket for about six to eight weeks 
until primary fusion takes place. The choice of approach will be entirely up to the comfort of the operating surgeon. Either procedure will result in clinical success. Thank you. I think these uh, options are acceptable, but in this particular case, I performed a posterior C1-2 wiring and fusion. I also used BMP, and I left the patient in a halo for a couple of weeks. And this has been followed by the use of a hard collar for another month. The patient is symptom-free at this uh, point. I am optimistic that uh, it will fuse, and I plan to do follow-up CT scan around the six-month mark. Thank you all for participating in this round, and we will see you next week. Have a great day. Thank you.